I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review, and this is a paid request, this time for Robert. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any reviews, topics, reactions, re-reviews, anything in between, randomness, whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Uh, both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Slither, which came out around 2006, directed by James Gunn, who would go on and direct Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. He's doing the new Suicide Squad. Uh, by this point, he had written the Dawn of the Dead remake. He helped write the Scooby-Doo live-action films. And before that, he worked with Trauma. Now, you tell this film is an ode to the... F Not only just sci-fi movies back in the day, but to other stuff too, because you see a lot of nods by among the town, you look at the name of the stores, and there's Earl Bassett a Community School, and Earl Bassett is Fred Ward's character from Tremors. I think one is like Max Wren's convenience store or something. I believe that's the character James Woods played in Videodrome. I know there's R.J. McCready. That name pops up on the store, and that's, of course, Kurt Russell's character and John Carpenter's The Thing. So, I mean, definitely owed to other movies. Granted, I think better movies. This is one of those films I like okay. I liked it. Has a decent sense of humor. Has a pretty good cast. You got Nathan Fillion. You have Michael Rooker. Elizabeth Banks. Greg Henry, who plays the mayor. And again, it's a fun film, entertaining ideas, but something about it I could never put my finger on to why I never loved the film. Like, I liked the film, like a, maybe a three out of five star movie, but it was never like a four or five out of five star movie. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because I've seen this concept done Wittier, funnier, more creative, better effects in films like Night of the Creeps. Which I know James Gunn said he had never seen Night of the Creeps, but the reason for the comparison, they're two films where they deal with alien from outer space, which are these slugs that didn't get into you by your mouth and then control your body like a zombie. So, I mean, that's pretty damn similar on that aspect. Not in terms of characters, but it also, and it's a horror comedy on top of that. So, again, James Gunn said he'd never seen Night of the Creeps, so take his word for it. But I'm just saying, a horror comedy with that, you know, there's a fair comparison to make between the two. And Night of the Creeps, I would say, again, 
that's a film I don't love either. I liked, but that one just had a bit more spark to it. Maybe just the crazy practical effects. And this has some decent effects, but a lot of it's CGI. And it's CGI that doesn't hold up the best. There's some good practical, the makeup of Michael Rooker's body, especially in the third act. But, like, there's a scene where a person been made to be a receptacle for a shitload of larva. And the practical nature looks good, but it's big part of a barn. But then when it's opening up and it splashes with like a thousand larva, larvae, it's not again, the effects don't hold, the, hold up the best there. Michael Rooker. Always nice to see him in there. I'm a big fan of his ever since I saw him in Cliffhanger. He was also in Henry Portrait for Serial Killer. And he's worked with James Gunn, of course, for the Guardians of the Galaxy films. He's a guy who is married to Elizabeth Banks, who's a teacher. And he's the guy who first gets infested, in, infected with the slug. And he's always talking about meat, meat, where's the meat? Surprised he didn't go, where's the beef? So... He does a good job. Elizabeth Banks is okay. Like I, I have to take out the fact that she's the same lady that go on to direct that piece of shit Charlie's Angels movie. They came out a few years ago and then she was in it as Bosley. I gotta take that out of the equation. She does fine in this role as the woman who cares for Michael Rooker. But you get the idea in the relationship that she was... Too young for when she married Michael Rooker back in the day. And now she's kind of, I don't want to say obedient, but maybe part of her cared for him, but not truly loved him. Nathan Fillion, I think that's a one thing is I wish Nathan Fillion had more to do. I know that doesn't make sense to, to some people, but It doesn't seem like until the second half where you get to see more of the character begin to prominence with Nathan Fillion's role. He does appear from time to time. Like he's with his buddy in the cop car and the guy's looking at birds or whatever, how fast they're going. While they pop up in a, I don't want to say a bar, but... He sees Elizabeth, Elizabeth Banks and the guy gives him shit like, oh yeah, you've been pining for that torch for so long, but your arm's getting tired. But it's not a whole lot, of, and Nathan Fillion I'm just a big fan of, and I think that's a guy that should have gotten a lot more roles, a lot bigger roles. Uh, There's talks of him doing Uncharted, that never happened. Green Lantern, that never happened. I was surprised James Gunn didn't pick him for Guardians of the Galaxy, for the Chris Pratt role. Chris Pratt does a good job. I think Nathan Fillion would have done an, an excellent job as Star-Lord. So I'm surprised James Gunn, maybe James Gunn's like, I worked, but I mean, he's worked with Michael Rooker before and put him in a pretty decent role. So I did, I'm just surprised he didn't put Nathan Fillion. I know mainly he, Nathan Fillion's been doing TV. He did that TV show Castle. He's in another one called, was it The Rookie? can't remember his new show but I, I i like the guy he's got a lot of charisma to him i think he's got a fun personality and he's fun in the role but again just doesn't seem like he has a lot to do even against the the creatures i think that's another thing that maybe as i'm talking there's some fun ideas again the Having the, the one girl that Michael Rooker picks up and then makes her get pregnant with all of the different larvae. And then at one point, like, feeds her these dead animals. And apparently when you're affected, you just have this hunger to eat whatever, even if it's dead animals and stuff. And it makes you feel good. There's some fun lines of dialogue. Like, when Greg Henry's trying to understand what Nathan Fillion's talking about and... Great Henry, who I've seen in other stuff. He was in the slasher film back in the day called Just Before Dawn. He's been in other stuff too. He's entertaining as the mayor. And it's always probably that Lyme disease. And Nathan Fillion says, oh, 
Lyme disease, that makes you look like a squid, huh? Like, without missing a beat. Like, that's what I mean. Nathan Fillion does a good job. I wish... Let me put it this way. I wish there was the amount of Nathan Fillion in this as... Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward and Tremors. And Great Henry, the movie makes it seem as if we're supposed to dislike Great Henry and his mayor character. I never really did. Because the movie makes it seem as if, oh, this moment later on where he's been affected and he's chowing down on dead animals and, oh, maybe he's like getting his just desserts. I never felt that way with Great Henry. I didn't. He's not the most level headed character. Or he's pissed like, where's the Mr. Pib? Which is, I don't blame him. That's how I feel when I don't have Mellow Yellow. We're my fucking Mellow. So again, maybe they thought he would be more annoying. And maybe it is for some people. But for me, I don't know. Great Henry, just a decently fun character. That I actually would have liked to have seen make it to the end. I think that would have been a nice twist. Like the asshole mayor. And I didn't... I mean... He was a little bit of an asshole. But I've seen much worse. It's not like he's Burke from... Aliens. But I think that would have been a nice twist. Like the mayor who... But then... What do we see in a lot of these movies? The mayor that either... It's the mayor from Jaws. And he's... Let's, let the whatever event go on. Or... He's shady, or there's something more uh, underneath gray area. Don't trust him. But to have a, a type of character and then do this turn where he becomes like a badass and taking ass, taking names. I think that would have been cool. Like, great, uh, great Henry talking smack. And that's another thing is I wish the movie went to another gear by the end. And for some reason, I felt like there was some pretty entertaining stuff when they try to get the Michael Rooker and you get some nice practical makeup and he does this move and our guy gets cut and opens up a little bit. Although then some CGI door mixed in there. That, again, that doesn't really hold up the best. This is one bit they try to do that's like a, a deer that went a bit crazy. But even like a scene like that. And Rex's bed kind of falls flat. Does that. I mean even the scene. I hate to say in Cabin Fever. Where it, that deer hit the fucking windshield. Was going crazy. At Ryder Strong. That felt more crazy of a scene. Compared to this. Or you know, Evil Dead 2. With the, the deer. Laughing at Ash. I Again it just felt like. When it got to the end, there was another step that I wish, like, Elizabeth Baines and Nathan Fillion, they're going to town and blowing all these zombies away, and, uh, like, Night of the Creeps. Night of the Creeps when Tom Atkins, like, pa 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 pa, and then our lead hero gets a flame for, and it, it never really felt like it went to that level. Where they're, they're really battling these creatures. Because they really don't. I mean, there's a little bit of stuff. Like, Elizabeth Banks stabs one in the head. and uh, That bit with the deer. But it's mainly them avoiding. Elizabeth Banks gets taken. Nathan Fillion and this girl. And by the way, that girl, I don't even remember her being in the first half of the film. She might have been, to be fair. But for some reason, I just didn't. Regist register her as much of a character and then when it got to she's <clears throat> in a bathtub I'm going okay I forgot who the hell that character was who's this girl in the bathtub I completely forgot who the hell that was and then that's when the sluts get in and it takes over her mom and her brothers <clears throat> then Nathan Fillion comes up to help but again this whole time I'm going who the hell is this girl like, who the hell is this girl? I don't remember her. And then she becomes one hour of our three leads because she bit something. And then she had, like, a psychic link to... Which I swear, I've seen that in quite a few films, too. Where something happens and then you have a character that has a psychic link. And thus 
able to know all the exposition. And hell, that could have been Great Henry's character. That could have been the change. That could have been the change where he's getting ready, he crunches on it, and then that's when he's like, I'm not going to be an asshole anymore, I'm going to be this ass kicker, and he's going to give the exposition, but the way Great Henry was talking throughout a more entertaining manner. I didn't care about this lady in the bathtub. You know, that's in most of the promotion, you know, that part. I didn't care about her. I had no reason to care about her because I didn't think they did much of a job developing her, building her up. And then the fact that she becomes one of our main three, I'm like, I don't care. I like Nathan Fillion. Elizabeth Banks, it's all right. I've seen better. But I know I'm going over the place. I apologize. That's most mostly how my reviews are. Just spur of the moment tangent field. So let me backtrack. Just people don't ask, you know, why do I like the film? Positives. Like I said, it does have a fun sense of humor. For example, someone's doing a karaoke song to The Crying Game. It's the crying game. And it's this really stiff lady who's poorly doing it, you know, on purpose for the film. Um, like I said, moments like that are chuckle worthy. The cast, like Michael Rooker, good actor, the way he changes throughout, where they put a little bit on his body and chest, and then his face starts changing more and more. And by the end, he looks a little bit like. An alternate version. Remember Freet? You probably don't. With Alex Winter. Where half his face is normal. and then Or like the. Something from from Beyond. Or probably going for a little bit. Of like the end of John Carver's The Thing. Well Wilford Bremley kind of. It was Wilford Bremley. But like a bunch of other stuff on it. Like, again James Gunn's were owed to older films. That practical effects were pretty decent. You know, the, some of the CGI slugs and other stuff, eh, you know, again, didn't hold up the best. So Nathan Fillion, didn't enjoy him as an actor. I just wished he would have done more. I didn't feel like he did enough. Well, I mean, which is not granted fair to say because he does do important stuff. He does do important stuff at the end. Um, that helps kill and defeat the, the enemy. Which, by the way, when that creature micro explodes, that is some bad CGI. That's one thing that's really bad, is when the final explosion, pretty bad with you know, the creature. Eh. But just like Mark, with uh, Nathan Fillion, I, I wish he was either more... The romance between him and Elizabeth Banks is hinted at. But I guess I wanted even more development of it. I, just, I don't know, just something about wanting more Nathan Fillion. Maybe just wanting them to, to really go to town and kick ass, take names. I'm not saying it has to be Sylvester Stallone, but just you know, a little bit of that extra oomph in the, in the third act. And I would trade that, that girl, I almost want to say random girl, because I don't even remember her name, bathtub girl, for... Great Henry. I would rather, you know, trade those out. Have Great Henry and do what I said before. And, you know, not all the humor works. Like when they see Michael Rooker more screwed up, one of the deputies goes, Oh, what the hell was the line? I'm trying to remember. Oh, it looks like something that fell off my dick during the war. I'm like, good for you. You want a cookie? But again, some of the humor words, like I said, when they find that big, that girl who's really big in the shed and in the barn and things are rumbling and someone goes, stop doing this shit. And she's like, it fucking hurts. And then she explodes. And again, you know, not the best effects.
But yeah, I mean, again, watch it again. It's a decent film. It's not a film I rewatch a lot. I know Stream Factory team up with a Blu-ray. I would never pick it up. I just, for B-movies, there's a lot more B-movies that I either found funnier, crazier, more exciting, or more action-packed. But I mean, it's not a bad film. Again, it's just... It's hard to think of it as such an original film when I already saw a film like it called Night of the Creeps. Among other B-movies. And again, the, the characters are fine, but uh, yeah, I've seen better versions of those characters in other films. And some of the practical effects are nice, but some of the CGI for 2006, it doesn't hold up the best. Music, the score, I don't remember the score, the musical score. And like I said, the third act, it, I just wish it wouldn't went even more into gonzo crazy insanity I don't know how but or just something more explosive or I don't know just someone was lacking the third act it was like when that girl that I don't even remember her being in the previous parts of the film oh there's a girl in a bathtub who's her who she had I guess I mean maybe if she was in before she might have been a probably student in Elizabeth Banks class because she's a teacher Shows how worthwhile that character was. That I don't remember in the first half of the movie. So, like I, like I said, if it was a, if I was giving star ratings, I would give like a three out of five star. It's a decent film. There's nothing for me to get that mad about. But I've never been like, oh my god, this is awesome, terrific, underrated gem. That's other people. That was never me. So it, it's it's an all right film. And uh, I, I just like this is a <laughs> shitty review, but what can I do? I did my best. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.